Now, from WYDC-TV, this is Big Fox News at 10. Good evening, I'm Ann Emanuel. All on its own, Elmira is a city with a deep, rich history. Well, today, a building that's part of that history had some changes made to it. Our Maggie Hall tells us what we need to know about the Mark Twain study. This historical piece of architecture behind me is having some preservationist work done on it. I spoke to experts about what this work on the building known as the Mark Twain study means and what it means to have it in downtown Elmira. Inside the Mark Twain study, the famous author wrote major parts of Huckleberry Finn, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court, and many other of his works. The windows on the gazebo-like structure were restored with mindfulness to their originality. We were hired to restore the window sashes, so what our goal is is to put them back in working condition as they worked originally. Okay. Over the, over the years, they've been, they were painted shut, the hardware was broken, um, and I think there had been some leaks and some of the pulleys, which are iron, had rusted shut. They, they were frozen. The study building was moved from Quarry Farm on the Elmira Hills to the Elmira College campus in 1952. Well, obviously, the Mark Twain study is a, a landmark, not only for the community, but nationally. Yeah, I think that it's inspiring for people who are in school here to be really connected to the history of Elmira. Um, Western New York and upstate New York has like a lot of amazing history, so it's exciting to have something very concrete to remind people of what happened here and the importance that it has for our nation. I think it's wonderful that it's on the campus because where it originally was located at Quarry Farm, the public wasn't able to visit. And so here anyone can come see it. Um, that's important both for, for local people to be proud of, but for visitors to the area, you know, national and internationally to, to visit. Stephen Daisy installed the historically preserved and restored windows today. You can check out the Mark Twain study for yourself located right on Elmira College campus. Maggie Hall, Big Fox News, Elmira. Corning Painted Post School District is giving away school supplies to students. Hawk Threads is a program that collects gently used clothes and school supplies for students. Today, the school district gave out those supplies. And it's not too late. Anyone looking to donate can drop off donations at the high school offices. Donations can be made from 7.30 in the morning until 4. To learn more about Hawk Threads and their upcoming events, email the address on your screen. A new shelter for unhoused people in Elmira will be opening. As of 2019, there were over 550 individuals in Chemung County that experienced homelessness. The new shelter will open on High Street in a gymnasium next to St. Joseph's Hospital. 48 individuals can live in the shelter at one time in separate living spaces. Catholic Charities will run the shelter, which is set to open this November. Need a place to store your boat or RV this winter? Chemung County might be able to lend a hand. On September 6th, the county will be available for reservation requests. The storage will be at the Chemung County Fairgrounds. The fee is based on the size of the item and trailer. You can make your reservation request on the Chemung County website. Many of us will be hitting the road this holiday weekend, so let's get a quick check on gas prices in the region. In Chemung County, the average at the pump is $3.86. In Tioga County, drivers are paying $3.87. Prices in Steuben County are also $3.87, and drivers leaving from Broome County will be paying the most at $3.96 per gallon. Statewide, the average is $3.90, just above the national average of $3.82. Hurricane Idalia made landfall in Florida's Big Bend near Keaton Beach. It arrived as a Category 3 storm, powerful enough to knock down homes and power lines. Rebecca Castor has more. Millions of Floridians told to hunker down as Hurricane Idalia makes landfall. With winds of up to 125 miles per hour, Idalia arriving along Florida's Gulf Coast as a Category 3 hurricane. Destructive winds uprooting trees, damaging buildings, and knocking out power to thousands overnight. Wherever you are, uh, hunker down. This is a very, very powerful storm. A dangerous storm surge projected to reach up to 16 feet in some spots, already causing coastal flooding. This is what it looked like in St. Petersburg, where police say they had to rescue one person early this morning from a mobile home park. 
The state says it's ready for additional rescues if needed, with hundreds of crews, National Guardsmen, and the Coast Guard on standby. When the winds die down to a sufficient level, search and rescue efforts will begin. High water is also flooding the beach in Clearwater, where mandatory evacuation orders are in place. State officials now urging residents who didn't leave evacuation zones to stay inside. People have curiosity. They want to put on their rain clothes. They want to go out and watch. Don't do it. It's not safe. Idalia has already prompted nearly a dozen tornado warnings. It's expected to continue dropping heavy rain up to 12 inches in some areas as it moves across North Florida and heads to Georgia and the Carolinas. Crews throughout Florida are now actively working to restore power to the hundreds of thousands left in the dark from this storm. In Bel Air, Florida, Rebecca Castor, Fox News. The Republican field for 2024 is starting to thin out. One candidate is dropping out as more rifts develop among GOP contenders. And as Doug Luzader reports, the White House is also facing more questions about President Biden's age as he seeks a second term. Well, President Biden's age is shaping up to be a big issue with voters in the general election. But before we even get there, Republican candidates have to make it through a bruising primary. Miami Mayor Francis Suarez's campaign lasted for just over two months. He never really caught traction, and after failing to qualify for last week's debate in Wisconsin, he has now thrown in the towel. I should have every right to do that. And while former President Trump is railing against court dates that may start crowding out his campaign schedule, he is still drawing the lion's share of attention. If Trump is once again sucking up the oxygen, getting all of the media coverage um, from that trial going into Super Tuesday, that I, I can't see how that necessarily hurts him. Other Republicans jockey for space, but there are issues dividing them, including a push for more Ukraine war funding, met with skepticism from rising GOP contender Vivek Ramaswamy. I do not think that this war advances American interests. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie took aim at Ramaswamy. These are all things that I guess Harvard guys talk about in the salons up in Cambridge, um, but they really have nothing to do with what America needs to do as a leader to protect our values all around the world. President Biden is able to steer clear of the Republican infighting for the most part, but the White House is spending more and more time fending off questions about his age. You're talking about how he's looking right now. He's that is, but, I think like the average but, American male but, only but, lives to be 77 thing, or something. And a recent Associated Press poll showed that 77 percent of U.S. adults think President Biden is too old for a second term. In Washington, Doug Lusader, Fox News. Your complete forecast is next. Plus, a class action suit accuses Burger King of false advertising its signature Whopper. How the fast food giant is responding to the accusations still ahead. Here's your local stock market update from Big Fox. Your Twin Tiers forecast from Big Fox. Good evening. As we were keeping an eye on yesterday was another round of some of those showers and thunderstorms. And as it was just able to bring a few of those scattered areas to the region, we did see accumulation even hold anywhere from just a few tenths of an inch to some areas getting just over that half an inch marker, bringing some isolated flooding more off towards the southeast as we were expecting with that system. But note that it has been a very wet month, even just looking at the rainfall that we received over the last seven days. There's that blob of heavy rain that was causing for those flooding concerns earlier early this week and really seeing that at least the entire area walked away with at least some type of accumulation and then looking at the 30 day precipitation, just the vibrancy of the rich moisture that we have been dealing with really much of our area running into that eastern portion of the state, leaving much of the western portion of the state still battling some drought conditions, but not too much to see here when it comes to drought conditions. Those very saturated soils, though, are going to finally get a break. We saw that the clouds were breaking apart as we stepped our way into 
into our Wednesday. And as we roll into our last day of August, we're going to have some fall like conditions as we start off the day with temperatures into those lower 50s with some lingering moisture. There could be some patchy fog. What's going to limit that fog development will be that we are underneath some stronger northerly winds that will continue to keep us with that fall like feel even expected to linger into potentially our first day of September. Now these bright skies that have been gradually returning will hold on and not only just hold on for the weekend, but looking at our extended forecast to hold dry conditions as it is much needed after the very saturated last few weeks we've been seeing. But with the bright skies, what we're going to see is that a warming trend is also going to be paired up with that as we'll even see a slight summer temperature return as we could see highs back into the 90s. That's going to feel much different than the 70s that we're expected to only see for high temperatures tomorrow. So as we start off with those low 50s again, maybe some passing clouds and some morning fog, but again, pretty limited. And then that northerly flow, even with that sunshine, is going to restrict our temperatures into those 70s. So definitely going to get your taste of fall for your last day of our August forecast, where we're looking at temperatures about 5 to even up to 10 degrees below normal. Looking at even Wayland there, 69 degrees. Westfield, 69. Corning, 72 degrees. Watkins Glen, there, 70 degrees. Now, as we head into our Friday, we start off the morning with, again, another round of those very cool temperatures. So definitely some open window weather here for the next 24, 48 hours. There will be calmer winds in place on Friday morning, so that is going to allow for some fog development. But by the afternoon, that will be able to burn off. We'll see some sunshine and near seasonable temperatures to start off August. But that summer return is expected, and we will see that even as early as our Sunday forecast. We could be flirting with the 90s, could have the 90s by Labor Day. And then not only do we see temperatures build to that threshold, but we will have some continuous warmth that will be paired up with these dry conditions into much of next week.